I just have one short piece because I probably need to get writing. It's called Popcorn. I was trying to write nothing specific, just trying to get some words down on the page, something to start with, so I went and made some popcorn. Well, actually, the laundry was dry, so I went to the basement, folded and hung it, moved the wet clothes into the dryer, and then carried the clean laundry upstairs and put it away. I've noticed that putting one load of laundry away at a time is less discouraging than letting it all pile up. The stuff on the top of the basket near, nearly teetering out, smashing the things at the bottom, and then there's so much laundry to put away all at once. It's discouraging. So I put the laundry away, and then it was time for popcorn, and then writing. I measured the popcorn into a paper bag with the one quarter measuring cup. Then I looked at the handful of kernels left in the package, and what the hell, added those two. The popcorn is old, purchased during my last popcorn phase, and I'm starting a new popcorn phase, so there's a lot of duds. That's how I rationalize the extra quarter cup. I fold the bag closed and put it in the microwave for 90 seconds. I learned the popcorn in a paper bag trick from Mark Fitman's book, Food Matters. That way you can have quick popcorn without the nasty chemical stuff. I need to buy more paper bags. When the popcorn is done, I take the bag out of the microwave, dump the contents, both popped and unpopped, into a bowl, mist it with olive oil, give the bowl's contents a shake, mist, shake, mist. I grind pepper, shake, sprinkle salt, shake, and then I'm satisfied, almost. On the way out of ki the kitchen, I grab the seasoned salt. I walk back upstairs, and as I reach the last step, I change my grip on the bowl, so I'm holding it by the bottom, and then I drop it. The bottom, warm by its contents, is surprisingly hot. The bowl falls to the floor, sending popcorn and kernels shooting down the stairs. The seasoned salt rolls to the lowest spot in the hallway, the corner next to our bedroom door. I stand for a moment in disbelief. The house is silent. The dog is snoring in the next room. There was a time when he would have rushed out into the hallway and gobbled all the popcorn he could get, probably taking care of most of the kernels, too. Now he just sleeps on. He's getting old. A few pieces are left in the bowl. Not moving yet, I eat them. Then I step away from the sea of popcorn and kernels. I notice there are kernels caught in the decorative folds of my shoes. I take off my shoes and shake them out. Several unpopped kernels <coughs> rattle on the wood floor. I go into the spare room and get the vacuum cleaner. As I roll the vacuum cleaner by his bed, the dog wakes up and stiff with arthritic joints goes out into the hallway. I wonder if I'll have to prevent him from excitedly eating his way up and down the stairs. But no. He surveys the popcorn mess tiredly, as if to say, what have you done now? And then he trots wearily to his other bed in another room. I plug the vacuum in and start methodically in the hallway, pulling up popcorn detritus with the hose. I accidentally turn the vent side of the vacuum toward the stairs long enough to send a drift of popcorn down to the first landing. After that, I vacuum awkwardly, moving the bulky machine down the stairs with the vent away from the popcorn, clearing an area before I put the vacuum on it. Occasionally, popcorn stops up the end of the hose temporarily, creating a hydrangea-like bloom on the end of the nozzle. I reach the bottom landing and start working my way back up, capturing the stray kernels as I go. I wonder how many kernels I'll pick up here and there in the coming week. I put the vacuum away and take the bowl downstairs. I open a new container of popcorn. These kernels are much bigger than those in the last batch. This is Orville Redenbacher corn. The kernels are the size of pencil erasers. The previous package was Amish-grown popping corn, and in Mennonite fashion, the kernels were modestly sized. I put a quarter cup of kernels in a paper bag and then add a little more. I fold the bag and put it in the microwave. I check the laundry. It's not dry yet. I take the bag out of the microwave, dump the contents, both popped and unpopped, into a bowl, and grab our olive oil spray, mist, give the bowl's contents a shake, mist, shake, mist. I grind pepper, shake, sprinkle salt, shake, done. I walk back upstairs. On my way through the hall, I grab the seasoned salt, which is still lying near the bedroom door. The dog is settled on the carpet in the spare room. I sit on the couch, eat a few pieces, and read the paragraph I wrote 40 minutes ago. A piece of popcorn drops on the floor. I pick it up and toss it to the dog. It lands two feet in front of him. The dog startles, then spies the popcorn. He stares at it with a pained expression. He feels obligated to eat it, but then he'll have to move to do it. I feel guilty for introducing this dilemma. 
I remember Fritz as a puppy when we first got him, bouncing around our apartment, snuggling on the couch. We let him on the furniture then, before we bought new furniture, our own furniture, before we started caring about the cleanliness of our house. Fritz gingerly stands. He walks stiffly toward the popcorn and eats it. He looks around, wondering what to do next, then walks to his bed, the one he started the afternoon in, and folds himself into it. In the basement, the dryer buzzes. I think about the young woman, the young man, the puppy, the apartment, and now the house. And then I go downstairs to get the laundry, picking up a popcorn kernel as I go.